to part two of today's consciousness talk. What I'd like to talk to you a little bit about now is uh, before the path, we started talking about what is the meaning of life. We were talking about trying to figure out what that meaning is. Uh, we spoke a little bit about where do we come from to lay down the foundation and understanding of how we can find that personal meaning and to thrive on our personal path. For us to do that, as I mentioned earlier, we must learn to align with our higher selves. And I know that sounds a little bit, um, how shall I say, metaphysical out of this world for some people, but the reality of it is, is that when we align with our higher selves, uh, actually, why don't I define the higher self a little bit before I go on? The higher self is a part of you that is uh, aware and consciously awakened to the wholeness of your being. Uh, it has no limitations, it is beyond the ego, it is beyond the polarity, and it is uh, connected to that source of all creation, so to speak. Uh, when we're living in this uh, living in this consciousness of understanding, uh, we become more intuitive, we become more aware of uh, our emotions, and we become uh, a little bit more guided uh, toward and through our personal journey here uh, of life here on the planet. In order for us to achieve that, however, this is where a lot of what you see going on as far as uh, political protesting and whatnot uh, goes on, the, uh, the uh, exposure of corruption. We need to remove the veil of oppression and expand our consciousness. And in order to remove the veil of oppression and expand our consciousness, we've got to be aware of the veil of oppression and what is stopping us from expanding our consciousness. The first thing that comes into play, of course, is ego. Ego is the interaction with uh, your thinking mind uh, with the world outside of you. The ego can be used as a tool, of course. It helps me to know that I have to be on the air at 2 p.m. on Tuesday afternoon, Eastern Time. Uh, the ego also helps me to tie my shoes and tells me uh, when it's time to, uh, to have dinner, uh, if I'm on a schedule, etc., etc. However, uh, the ego can also be a very big distraction and it seems that uh, our world at large, the world around us, um, whether it be the media, whether it be politics, whether it be our peers, our school systems, um, people that are just living in the lowest vibration uh, seem to be guiding us into the distraction and using the ego to distract us. We see it all the time. We see it all the time in um, advertising. We see it all the time in, uh, in consumerism. Um, I personally feel that uh, anything that uh, emphasizes or enhances greed or need is a part of that veil of oppression. Uh, if we feel we need something uh, and not understanding it's only a want, then we have really succumbed to that, uh, that programming, that oppressive programming. So we really need to learn to see the key points of how we are being oppressed and how we are being oppressed by, by media, how we are being oppressed by um, our diets, how we're being oppressed by our lifestyles. And again, that could be a whole that can be a whole nother show. But uh, I, I, I'll give you a couple examples uh, ever so quickly. Um, the number one, of course, is media. Learning to to how shall we say choose your programming. Don't let your programming choose you. Is a good way of saying it. Um, so many of us uh, have uh, cable television with 200 channels of nothing. You know, we're constantly flicking through. Not me for years now, however, many people are constantly just clicking through, looking for something. But in the meantime, as someone is clicking through those 200 channels of nothing, there are advertisements and there are shows that, whether you want to admit it or not, every word that you hear, every image that you see is being absorbed by your subconscious. Everything that you see is being absorbed by your subconscious and therefore, what I would like to suggest is to become vigilant as to what you expose your senses to. Learning to remove the veil of oppression starts with your perception. Learning to 
be vigilant, learning to only allow or choosing to allow what it is consciously that you want to bring into your subconscious. Um, I remember a few years ago, even before Hulu and Netflix, um, I remember uh, making that decision and I was the one who chose what program I was going to watch, what TV show, what movie and what not. It wasn't, the decision wasn't made for me. And so it, again, to reiterate, just be conscious of what you're allowing into your subconscious. Be conscious of what you're watching on television. Be conscious of what programs you're watching on Netflix or Hulu or whatnot, and not just allow it to come through without any thought whatsoever. A great example of this are people that leave the television on all day in the background. You know, that is constantly feeding the subconscious, whether we want to admit it or not. So again, turn off the TV. Uh, be aware of what magazine subscriptions you have. Be aware of what you're doing uh, and allowing into your into your conscious into your subconsciousness. But also, the veil of oppression includes our diet, our our, our what we're eating. You know, is our food uh, keeping us down? Is it is it um, clogging up our pineal gland? Is it uh, making us feel heavy? Is it making us feel sleepy? Uh, drugs and alcohol as well. Uh, while drugs and alcohol can be used as tools to expand consciousness, they can also hamper consciousness when abused and used uh, way too often, as we've seen uh, when we move into drug addiction and whatnot. So being aware of these things is, is very important, as well as, let us not forget, um, electromagnetic signals from cell phones, cell towers, microwaves, uh, your Wi-Fi um, router, so much is out there that is to distract our consciousness and to break up our connection with our higher self that we have to do what we can in today's day and age to kind of reduce the harm that could come from that. I, I like to call it harm reduction, of course. So being aware uh, is very important and not giving in to the status quo. You know, the status quo, the corporate uh, masters, quote unquote, not my masters, but the masters of a majority of the people of the planet really have a way of um, manipulating people into thinking they're doing the right thing, whether it be uh, through um, these fake activist campaigns uh, that we see going on all the time, the conies of the world, so to speak, and we see it going on right now in uh, Nigeria. Uh, we're they're made people are made to feel good about something that really is not doing anything you know the pink ribbon ink uh stuff that goes on so much of it has absolutely no substance whatsoever and we're giving into that and uh, we're really just feeding the monster the veil of oppression is also feeding the corporations giving your money to the corporations um giving your money to banks uh, you know, move your money out of the bank, move it into a, a into a credit union. Uh, you know, as a member of a credit union, you have a vote on everything that goes on. Do you get to vote for the board of directors? You get to vote on the policies. Does an American bank allow you to do that? Absolutely not. So, if we must play the role, if we must play in uh, in terms of dollars and cents or pounds and shillings, wherever you may live. Uh, let's do it with the least harm uh, and uh, the less uh, least oppression as possible. Uh, again, using that term harm reduction as often as we can. Um, through this, through this, uh, we become a little clearer. That we feel, we begin to feel freer. You know, when we begin, when we detach the umbilical cord from the media, when we detach the umbilical cord from rotten foods and and poison and uh, and turn off the Wi-Fi and turn off the uh, the iPhone uh, when we're not using it, uh, we begin to feel freer. And that gives us the opportunity to begin to explore ourselves inward. And that is the next step, is learning to expand your consciousness by learning to quiet your mind. Meditation, yes, I've said it over and over again. There has to be a time, there has to be a place where you can literally go inward, quiet the mind, and connect with yourself. This is how we align with our higher self. 
It's not easy. It's not actually. It is very easy, I should say, but it does take some practice. It's just a matter of of being vigilant again, being vigilant as to the timing uh, when you are to do, uh, even if it's a five minute meditation or two minute meditation. Uh, expanding our consciousness can be done through music. It can be done through the use of um, uh, medicinal plants. It can be done through many different uh, ways and uh, through different techniques, uh, dance, yoga. Um, but expanding our consciousness is an essential part of learning your human mission of aligning with your higher self and and being able to thrive on your personal path if you are not giving your consciousness any tender loving care it is not going to give it back to you so on top of removing the veil of oppression we have got to as well be aware of our consciousness give it some love give it some care and allow it to expand naturally because it it will not happen forcefully it has to unfold at its own pace uh, again different practices from meditation yoga um, plants um, just resting dancing um, so much reiki whatever it is that, that you find allows you to get out of your ego and allows you to go inward that is a, a step toward aligning with your higher self what happens next as we begin so we've taken the steps to be aware of the veil that is around us around the planet we've begun we've become aware of how we allow ourselves and our consciousness to be oppressed we become aware of the things that we can do and begin to do them to expand our consciousness taking the steps to expand our consciousness what starts happening now is that the individual begins to be, begins to feel on a much deeper level uh, emotion becomes comes out to the forefront emotion rises um, from the depths of your soul literally and your emotion can be in the beginning it can be a little scary uh, a lot of people feel that they're going crazy a lot of people feel they're getting too sensitive or or too feminine or whatever but the emotion is neither masculine nor feminine it is emotion and an emotion can be your guidance system your emotion is a way for you to read uh, what is going on within you and around you uh, a good example of this you know we hear so much about um, God, these autistic children or these indigo children or these rainbow children and you notice how emotional they get when they're in a surrounding that makes them feel uncomfortable. Um, I'm sure when you were a child, you had these moments where you just didn't like a specific person. You didn't like being in a specific uh, place or whatnot. And there's a reason for that. You know, unfortunately, our society tries to tell kids, you know, oh, you know, just swallow that, you know, buck up. You know this you you have to go to school you know <laughs> or you have to go to uh that meeting or, or whatever it is uh that you're being forced to swallow but meanwhile inside your emotions are are, are just in a turmoil are, are all in an uproar and and as i say this i can't help but think um that some people might be saying well what about if you're crazy or whatnot see the whole idea of the steps that i'm presenting to you is in an emotionally stable person either that or it is to create emotional stability so i would like to think that if we understand where we came from if we learn and strive toward understanding the meaning of our life as we begin to move the, remove the veil of oppression and expand our consciousness a certain level of emotional stability is going to present itself and and it does i've seen people heal from very difficult emotional traumas um emotional imbalances um if you want to if you want to talk about one of the veils of oppression you can look at the psychiatric um what is that the d i want to say dsm i believe that's what it's called uh, how they make up illnesses you know in order to sell more pharmacological drugs so uh you know what is emotional balance that could be a whole nother show but um, if we are grounded, if we are living in awareness of our consciousness and certain emotions do arise, uh, we can say, and I can say uh, quite confidently that that is your emotional guidance system guiding you into specific direction. 
um, there are times where I just don't like certain people and I do not want to be around them and it hits me emotionally. I get very jittery, I get very angry or I get very upset and I don't want to be around a specific person only to find that, oh, that person is, uh, you know, a corporate attorney for Bank of America or, you know, that person is uh, selling insurance for, um, you know, Allstate or something like that. Something that I, I just know this is not someone that I would want to pull in to my sensitive um, and to my senses, so to speak. Remember what I said about being vigilant of what you allow into your perception. And that is a part of it. If something makes you emotionally uncomfortable, be real with yourself and say, I don't want that. Or if something makes you emotionally happy or draws you toward it, you know, move toward it. This has to do with our intuitive selves, which so many of us uh, want to deny exists. Do you know that your intuition is probably one of your greatest um one of your greatest allies in this journey on, of life. Even if you did nothing else that I spoke of today, even if you didn't agree with any of it, but if you agreed with the fact that your intuition exists and that your intuition is really trying to give you a specific uh, nudge away or to a specific direction, you would make your life so much easier. So many of us are, are afraid of, of what intuition means. You know, oh, intuition means you're psychic, which means you're crazy, or intuition doesn't exist, or it's make believe, or you know, that's a, it's a, it's fake, whatnot. And, and the reality of it is, is that we are very lucky that intuition does exist. It is a part of your um, your senses, and it is always trying to let you know. Now. That emotional reaction that I spoke of earlier, that emotional radar, I call it, is linked to your intuition. Your intuition kind of stimulates your emotional self to, to kind of give you a nudge in a specific way. But if you were to, let's say, your emotions are saying, I really want to go to that, uh, I don't know, that meeting in the meeting at the armory with those people talking about drumming i don't know i'm just making it up and you're you get really happy about the idea even though it's something you may have never done and let's say you go there and you meet someone who's really going to help you on your journey you're meeting someone perhaps that uh is offering you a job and something that you want to do that was your intuition stroking your emotions in order to get you motivated to do this your intuitive self is very, very keen on how to communicate with you if you allow it. Yes, it is done through the emotion. However, the intuition can be can be um, contacted or aligned with very easily. And the connection that you have with your intuitive self truly is the connection you have with your higher self. It is connected to the higher self. So by, by literally utilizing the tools of understanding your emotional self and being honest with your emotional self, that is going to create a deeper relationship with your intuitive self. As you create a deeper relationship with your intuitive self, that is where the step comes in, where you are now aligning with your higher self. And there is just a constant connection from your higher self down to your intuitive self and outward into your emotional self. If you're constantly reacting to that, if you're constantly acting and proacting with that, then it's fair to say you are living in the meaning of your own life. Then it's fair to say that you have found the meaning of your life and you are thriving on your personal path. The intuitive self has many ways of speaking to you. Be very aware of that. Um, the intuitive self will speak to you in your dreams. The intuitive self will speak to you in your body. Uh, many of us who are involved in uh, alternative healing will tell you that there is no such thing as um, a spontaneous disease that comes from nowhere. It is all linked to our emotional selves or our intuitive selves. Uh, everything from a backache to a stomach ache to cancer uh, to a cold, all of these things are an imbalance of our spiritual energy, our chi. 
Uh, we all know what chi is by now, I'm sure, but it is universal life energy. And we are made up of that. And it's been studied for thousands and thousands of years, way before Western medicine came along. The chi body and the energy body have been studied for geez, uh, several millennia. <clears throat> and it's nice that we are now coming back to it and starting to understand some of that. But going back to what I was saying earlier about the intuitive self is that as we begin to move into alignment with that and we begin to move into alignment with our higher self, we're going to get a lot more clarity. We're going to feel better. Um, decisions are going to be made much easier. Uh, sadly, sometimes uh, some of the things that we no longer need in our lives become very clear. And of course, turning away from that can be uh, emotionally disturbing, turning away from people, places or things that no longer suit our future selves or our present selves can be a little bit, um, you know, a little disheartening to let go of. But the reality of it is, is as we are moving in alignment with our higher self, in alignment with our intuitive selves, as we are moving, we begin to thrive on our personal path. And as we begin to thrive on our personal path, of course, we are going to want to stay on that particular uh, journey, on that particular way of uh, the path of clarity, the path of happiness, the path of um, feeling at peace, of, of, of enjoying life again. And that's not to say life isn't going to have its upheavals, that life is life is life is life. You know, we are still living um, in a human body. We're still experiencing uh, positive and negative emotions. But what will happen is you'll see that a lot of the negative emotional stuff can be filtered out very quickly.